Hey guys, in this video I will present the last problem from the first day of EMO 2023 that currently takes place in Japan. We consider an integer k greater than or equal to 2. Now we are asked to determine all sequences of positive integers a1, a2 and so on, for which there exists a polynomial p of x with non-negative integer coefficients, leading coefficient 1 and of degree k, such that for all integers n greater than or equal to 1, p of a n is equal to a n plus 1 times so on times a n plus k. c i greater than or equal to 0 tells us that p of x is greater than or equal to x to the power of k for any positive integer x. We will later want to use a strict inequality and therefore we first have to consider the case p of x is equal to x to the power of k. We immediately see that this polynomial is a valid choice for any constant sequence a n and so we can write down for our solutions the constant sequences a n is equal to a1. We can guess that this is indeed the only solution for our case and to prove that this is true let's just consider an a n with minimal value. Now a n to the power of k equals a n plus 1 times so on times a n plus k. So from this we can conclude that all of these variables a n plus 1 up to a n plus k must also be equal to this minimal sequence value namely a n. We can plug these values into our equation for a n minus 1 to obtain that a n minus 1 to the power of k is equal to a n to the power of k or a n minus 1 equals a n. So we have proven that a n minus 1 equals a n equals a n plus 1 and so by forwards backwards induction we obtain that for all integers m greater than or equal to 1 a m is equal to a1. Therefore this polynomial only works for constant sequences and so in all the other cases we obtain that p of x must be greater than x to the power of k. We now deal with the other case where p of x is greater than x to the power of k and begin our solution with proving that now a n must be an unbounded sequence. This becomes clear from our given equation namely p of a n is equal to a n plus 1 times so on times a n plus k. Now we can bound this from below uh, strictly with a n to the power of k and this term is less than or equal to the maximum of all of these terms to the power of k. Therefore one of these terms is always larger than a n and so we can find a strictly increasing subsequence of our sequence a n. Therefore since we are dealing with integers a n must be unbounded. In the second step we want to prove that a n is an increasing sequence and the reason why we can be confident in trying to prove this is an equation that we get out of this after some investigation. Namely, we see that if we plug in a n plus 1 here, that the right sides almost match up perfectly. And dividing those two equations gives us p of a n divided by p of a n plus 1 is equal to a n plus 1 divided by a n plus k plus 1. If we assume the opposite, namely a n plus 1 is less than a n, then because p is strictly increasing, we can conclude that p of a n plus 1 is less than p of a n. And therefore, we obtain that we must also have a n plus k plus 1 less than a n plus 1. So if we take a look at the graph of a i, then it will look something like this. We have n and n plus 1 and a n is larger than a n plus 1. Moreover, a n plus k plus 1 is even smaller than a n plus 1. From this picture, we immediately see that we must have at least one more pair of consecutive descending sequence members between n plus 1 and n plus k plus 1. Moreover, we can see that we must get some pair like this where a j plus 1 is less than a n plus 1. And we will thus bring this to a contradiction using infinite descent. Let us consider j from the set of indices i between 1 plus n and n plus k such that a i plus 1 is less than a i. Since a n plus k plus 1 is less than a n plus 1, we know that this set is non-empty. 
Moreover, we want to choose j to be the maximal element of that set because this tells us that aj plus 1 is less than or equal to aj plus 2 and so on up to less than or equal to a n plus k plus 1, which we know to be less than a n plus 1. Because j lies in that set, we also know that aj plus 1 must be less than aj. So if we take n such that a n plus 1 is less than a n, where a n plus 1 should be globally minimal with that property, we get a contradiction because we can always find a smaller such pair where aj plus 1 is smaller than a n plus 1, and therefore we are done. After defining dn to be a n plus 1 minus a n, we have just proven that dn is always greater than or equal to 0, and now we will show that dn is constant. Since we can bound all those terms from below by a n plus 1, this is greater than or equal to a n plus 1 to the power of k. Given our sequence a n, the assumption is that we can find such a polynomial p of x of degree k with leading coefficient 1. In that case, we can bound p of a n from above by a n plus c to the power of k for some constant c. Taking the kth root on both sides, we immediately obtain a bound for dn, namely dn is equal to a n plus 1 minus a n, which we now know to be less than or equal to c. Combining this with our second step, we get that dn can only attain these finitely many values between 0 and c. This tells us that we can define d to be the limb inf of uh, dn as n goes to infinity, where this is just fancy notation for saying that d is the minimal value that dn attains infinitely often. And our bounds tell us that d is actually an integer between 0 and c. We can relate a n and a n plus 1 using d n. Therefore, we can also relate p of a n and p of a n plus 1. We want to use this information to get a bound on a n plus k plus 1. So let us first rearrange this equality to a n plus k plus 1 is equal to a n plus 1 times p of a n plus 1 divided by p of a n. We are still interested in differences of terms, so let us subtract a n plus 1 to obtain that a n plus k plus 1 minus a n plus 1 equals a n plus 1 times p of a n plus 1 minus p of a n, all divided by p of a n. If we choose n in such a way that d n is equal to d, or in other words a n plus 1 is equal to a n plus d, we can write the right side as a n plus d times p of a n plus d minus p of a n divided by p of a n. This term is the quotient of two polynomials of a n. The denominator p of a n is a polynomial of kth degree and with leading coefficient 1. So we write a n to the power of k plus some smaller terms as a n gets large. For our numerator, we have an at most degree k with leading coefficient or coefficient in front of a n to the power of k, k times d. So, as we take a n to infinity, this converges to k times d. Here I was careful not to say that this is a polynomial of degree k because d could be zero, which is an annoying edge case right now. Since a n is increasing and unbounded, we therefore know that there exists a capital N such that for all n greater than capital N, the left side minus k times d has absolute value less than 1. Since d is attained infinitely often by dn, we can simply take n to be greater than capital N here. So we get a n plus k plus 1 minus a n plus 1 is equal to k times d. By the definition of d, we can also find a capital N prime such that for n greater than capital N prime, dn is at least d. We also take n greater than capital N prime. And since this quantity is simply dn plus 1 plus so on up to plus dn plus k, this gets a lower bound of k times d. Hence, we must have equality at every point and therefore dn plus 1 equals so on up to dn plus k and they are all equal to d. So from dn equals to d, we get dn plus 1 equals d. And so by induction, we have for all n prime greater than or equal to n, that d n prime equals d. Therefore, the polynomial p of x minus x plus d times x plus 2d times so on times x plus kd 
has infinitely many zeros, namely at a n prime for all n prime greater than or equal to n. And here we use just the original equation. And we use the fact that a n is unbounded to obtain that these are in fact infinitely many zeros. And so this must in fact be the value of p of x. Plugging this expression for p of x and our values a n up to a n plus k minus 1 into the equation allows us to retrieve that a n minus 1 equals a n minus d. We can continue in this way with backwards induction to obtain that the solution in this case must be of the form a n is equal to a 1 plus n minus 1 times d for all n. And here we want d to be an integer at least 1 because here we want that p of x is greater than x to the power of k. Since we have given constructions for the polynomials in these two cases, these are indeed solutions and therefore we are done.